Hello, my name's Di Wright. Um, I did study art and I did graduate as a mature student in 2000. And my art degree was an art and design degree and it taken at Leeds University, but I was lucky enough to study at Bretton Hall. As, as many of you know, this is the Yorkshire Sculpture Park and what an inspirational place. My, my degree was in surface pattern and textile design. It was fabulous, loved every minute. Uh, learned how to work with layers, work, learned how to work with texture, oh, many things, ink, bleach, you name it, we used it. But after I left, I put away my paints and my pencils and all my art supplies and I didn't touch anything for 15 years. But now I picked it all up again and I'm working with a passion and I'm working doing something that I enjoy. Something that just spurs me on. And so I was interested in making this little video which is sponsored by Doncaster Council and it's all about art movements. Well, where do you start? What inspires you? What inspires me? It's always different. But today I'm looking at Impressionism because the French Impressionism led to the Stades Group. And this is where I like to go. This is what inspires me. This is what I call my happy place. This is where I love to go and paint. There is never a day spent in stays where you don't want to create. Every day you see something new, even if it's the same scene you've seen a hundred times. It's different light, the tide's in, the tide's out, there's movement, the clouds are different. The activities are different. The people are different. It's just a very inspiring place. And so today, I'd like to talk to you about, as I said earlier, Impressionism. Well, Impressionism. Many of you know that it developed in France in the 19th century and is based on the practice of painting out of doors and spontaneously on the spot, rather than in a studio from sketches. And so, in this French Impressionist movement, we have at the forefront, we have Claude Monet, Edouard Manet, Edgar Degas, Renoir, and amongst them we have Camille Pissarro, whose advice was work at the same time on the sky, on the water, on the branches, on the ground. Keep everything going on in an equal basis. Don't be afraid of putting on colour. Paint generously and unhesitatingly, for it is best not to lose the first impression. And so these artists were inspired to go and work outdoors. They left the studios and out they went. By working quickly in front of their subjects in the open air, on plein air, this resulted in a greater awareness of light and colour and the shifting pattern of the natural scene. Brushwork became rapid and broken into separate dabs in order to render the fleeting quality of light. This group, held their first exhibition in Paris in 1874 and included work by Monet and Renoir, Degas and Paul Cézanne. The work shown was greeted with derision and Monet's piece, Impression Sunrise, was particularly singled out for ridicule. There were seven further exhibitions at intervals until 1886, which included Camille Pissarro, Bertie Morisot and Edouard Mamé. A 
At around the turn of the 20th century, Claude Monet visits England with his friend Camille Pissarro and they worked on many pieces, being inspired by London and the fog, the Houses of Parliament, Parliament being included in these city landscapes. And also in London at the time, we had James McNeil Whistler, an American, who settled there in 1863, and he was studying forms of Impressionism, and they were being developed by his pupils, Walter Richard Sickert and Wilson Steer. And they promoted the New English Art Club, which was founded in 1886. And in 1889, Sickert and Steer organised the exhibition London Impressionists. Well, meanwhile, in 1885, John Singer Sargent, another American, arrived in France and then he settled in London. And whilst in France, actually, Sargent had met Claude Monet. So we're getting a little melting pot here and they're all getting the little connections to each other. And over the next few years, Sargent made a major contribution to Impressionism in Britain, such as painting carnation, lily, lily rose. An absolutely beautiful, beautiful painting, which was painted entirely out of doors. And so we have a British Impressionism movement and little groups working together and spreading themselves around the country. We've got Wilson Steer heading for Warburswick in Suffolk. We have George Clausen in Essex. We have Stanhope Forbes found in the Newlyn School in Cornwall. And we have John Singer Sargent settling in the Cotswolds. And then we have the States Group. Now, the States Group. This group of artists became part an integral part of the community in States. They created employment through their need for lodgings and for food. They paid models to model for them and they wanted art studio space. And their importance in the social history of States, I think is beyond shadow of a doubt because they documented local life, daily work. They provided a pictorial history of the day-to-day -day living in this very unique little village. There's one, of, one of the artists, Joseph Bagshaw, was a very keen sailor and he even went out on the fishermen's boats so he could get first-hand experience and it really helped him in his work. He would use all this to give his paintings a lifelike realism. This was an industrious group of artists and not a small group by any means. Um, it swelled to around 40 at one time. They produced a variety of works that included landscapes, portraits, genre paintings, still lives, interiors. One of the artists painting his days at this time was a young Laura Johnson, who would become the well famous Dame Laura Knight. She'd been pointed in the direction of stairs by her art tutor, Master of Arts from Nottingham School of Art, Thomas Barrett. He encouraged Laura to go to stairs, telling her, just go, there is nowhere quite like it for painting. And so Laura, along with her husband-to-be, Harold Knight, headed for Staves and they set up a studio in the village uh, and painted there daily and I have been lucky enough to actually stay in that studio. The Staves first exhibition was at the Fisherman's Institute in 1901. Amongst the many notable artists that worked at Staves, along with Dame Laura Knight, were Florence Hess, whose beautiful painting, Dancing on Runswick Beach, um, just echoes everything that's connected to Impressionism. The brush strokes, the quickness, the immediacy, the light, the movement, beautiful piece. And we have Mark Senior, 
Owen Bowen, Frederick William Jackson, William Frederick Mayer, Robert Jobling, and there's many more, but it's a very long list. But the person, the artist who I feel a special connection with is Laura Knight. Um, Laura worked in oils, watercolours, etching, engraving and dry point. She was a painter in the figurative realist tradition and she embraced English Impressionism. Her success in the male-dominated British art establishment paved the way for greater status and recognition for women artists. In 1929, she was created a dame and in 1936 became the first woman elected to full membership of the Royal Academy. A large retrospective exhibition at the Royal Academy in 1965 was the first for a woman. Laura Knight was known for painting amidst the world of theatre and ballet in London and for being a war artist during the Second World War. She was also greatly interested and inspired by marginalised communities and individuals, which included the gypsies and circus performers. Do you need the intensity of the light or the depth of the shadows? Is it the colour? Is it the vibrancy or the delicacy of form and line, the curves, the symmetry? Or do you need the story? Is there an atmosphere that draws you in? An ambience that has been created by all of the above? Or is it the freedom to be bold like the Impressionists? Is it a need for a tactile brush stroke and the thickness of paint, the depth and vibrancy of colour? 
Is it the excitement of just taking an easel and paints, getting outside to work on plein air? Or maybe just take a sketchbook and watercolours and a little stool and find yourself a quiet little corner and working with what your eyes see and what your senses digest. Being quick, enjoying the immediacy of the scene, being challenged by the light as it chases around your canvas. What motivates you? What wakes up your senses? A session working on plein air by the sea cannot be beaten. Thank you.